members of the public. I'm Councillor Tim Gibson, so I'll be chairing this evening's meeting. The meeting will be recorded and proceedings will be conducted in accordance with the Council's constitution, including procedure rules which are available on the Council's website. Could I ask remote attendees to turn off their camera unless they're speaking and remind you that instant messenger facility is to facilitate democratic services alerting me to a remote issue. Any member of the public abusing the incident messaging facility may be removed from the meeting. Item one on the agenda is our emergency evacuation procedure. There is no planned evacuation drill this evening, and accordingly, if the alarm sounds, it is to be treated as a genuine need to evacuate. There are emergency exits to my right, or through the chamber, to the left, along the passageway, and to the right, opposite the lifts. Please note that the lifts must not be used. The assembly point is on the far side of the car park and it's important that you remain there and do not return to the building until I have announced that it is safe to do so. If anyone present will need assistance in evacuating and negotiating the stairs, could you please inform me now so that we can make necessary arrangements to assist you? Yeah, uh, Councillor Baldock. Thank you, Mr Chairman. I just wanted to inform you I, want, I, I would like to speak on item 2.2. Thank you, duly noted. <clears throat> so before I proceed with the formal consideration of applications this evening, could I ask members please to stand for a minute's silence in respect to the sad passing of serving councillor Cameron Beard, a former stalwart of this committee. And as this is an extraordinary committee, I propose to facilitate a full tribute to Cameron at our next full meeting. Thank you, members. Thank you, members, and thank you, public, for extending your courtesy. Thank you. This evening's meeting has a quasi-judicial role and determines the rights and obligations of the applicant. Members must consider each application and everything that is said in the meeting concerning the application and make their decision based solely on their planning judgment for the information which is available to them. Following a decision by members, delegated authority is given to the planning officer to issue the decision notice and planning permission is not granted or refused until the issue of that decision notice. Any member of the council who is not a member of the planning committee may attend as a visiting member and may speak having given prior notification. Such visiting members may of course include ward members and whilst visiting members can speak on an application they are not permitted to vote. Any member acting as a substitute on the planning committee must have undertaken appropriate training before doing so. Members must remain in a meeting for the whole time that each item is debated and should not vote on that item unless they have done so. I now like to welcome our public speakers and remind you that you have three minutes to speak and an audible warning of time will be given when there are 30 seconds remaining. If the meeting is deferred to conduct a site meeting, you may speak both at this meeting and at the site meeting, but there will be no further opportunity to speak on the matter when it comes back to the planning committee. This evening's extraordinary meeting will not follow the order set out in the agenda 
And in particular, I'll be considering item 2.2 first, followed by item 2.1 and subsequently item 2.3. Item 2 on the agenda, policies for absence. Any substitute, please. Thank you, Chairman. Apologies have been received from Councillor Elliot Jays, who is sub substituted by Councillor Richard Palmer, and from Councillor David Simmons, who is attending re remotely, or well, was anyway, sorry, and also from Councillor Richard Darby. Councillor Cameron Beatt's position on planning committee has been filled by Councillor Lloyd Bowen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, the speaker over there seems to be making strange noises. I don't know what to do about that. Councillor Boyne. Kevin, uh, just no, I know you're not a committee member. I have apologies from Councillor Boyne. We're planning to be here tonight, but uh, yeah. service staff to admit that he's elsewhere. Okay, thank you. Mm. Yeah, it sounds like there's an open mic. Is it anyone that's got a mic open? It could be someone in the chair. Could I ask any of the remote attendees if you've got a mic open, please, to um to close it for us? We're getting feedback in the chamber. Thank you. So item three on the agenda is to invite members' declarations of disclosable pecuniary interests in the Lawfulism Act. Thank you. And disclosable non pecuniary interest under the Code of Conduct adopted by the Council. Thank you. I would now like to remind the meeting that where it's possible that a fair minded and informed observer, having considered the facts, would conclude that there's a real possibility that a member might be predetermined or biased on any agenda item, the member should declare this possibility and then leave the room whilst that item is considered. Thank you all very much indeed. Um, we now move uh, swiftly on to um, item four, which is a report of the Head of Planning Services, and we'll consider the attached report uh, part two, and we'll commence with item uh, 2.2. This is land and this is land west of Church or Bapchild Tong. This reference number is a double two oblique five zero two eight three four oblique. Mr. Layton's mic said that you get a feedback. Apologies. Thank you, Mr. Layton. Uh, yes, land west of Church Road, Batchel, Tong, Kent. And I'll thank you for um, an outline and any updates. And um, at this stage, uh, members, uh, I would say that we've, we have got some um, late sheets which have arrived uh, in relation to this evening's meeting. And if you desire time um, to take those in, then uh, could you please signify it? OK, um, would 10 minutes be fine? Yep. OK, uh, 10 minutes then to, to look at those before we actually commence. Thank you.
Can you turn their microphone on, please? We can hear nothing. Okay, I'll carry on. Chair Chairman, can you turn the microphone on, please? We can't hear anything. <laughs> With respect, um, we, can, we can hear quite clearly uh, in the chamber. Um, so remotely, I'll, I'll get somebody to action that for us before we um, before we proceed. Thank you. Yeah, should be better. Yeah. Councillor Simmons, can you hear me? Yes, Chairman, I can now. Thank you very much. We couldn't hear anything before then. I, I know I'm very quietly spoken. That's perhaps why. It wasn't for you. It was whoever was giving the officers update. Yes, OK, Mr Lane, I'll, I'll pass, uh, um, pass back to you. I've realised my own microphone is off, so it may be hearing in the room, but not remotely. So I'll turn it on. OK. Um, can you hear me now? You've got it on twice. Yes. Yes. I'll leave that off so there's no there's no speak back. I'll speak back so people can really understand. Um, Ms. Lane, could, could, you, could I just interject? Could you use just the um the microphone in front of you so we're getting feedback? So yeah, turn your laptop okay. microphone's there. So that that's it. Okay. I was wondering why they might not be able to hear remotely. If by that alone. OK. Um, come on to the first main issue, which is the heritage impact. Um, the site uh, uh, is adjacent to the Grade 1 listed St. Giles Church Tong, which is at risk and has an, a number of um, um, yeah, complex issues to do with its structure and so on, which need resolving and uh, it's considered by English Heritage to be urgent. And I've got an update today from them on that. Um, as well as the Grade 2 listed West Carn Farm complex. Um, it's unusual in that the views from the site are very limited of the church. You can only really see it from one point on um, a public footpath, which runs through the uh, site um, uh, because of a lack of hedgerow, which is part of the biodiversity improvement to the scheme, will be, um, will be relayed. Um, so it's largely non-visual impacts. Um, such as what's called suburbanisation, which um, affect the church. And if this is considered by Heritage England as less than substantial harm at the lower end of the spectrum. Now, we've been in touch by uh, our conservation officer with um, the parochial church council and the expert assessor for the church, and they've listed a, a considerable list of, um, of, of, of improvements particularly to the porch, which has structural problems, and also to repair of um, a, a medieval wall painting. Um, there was some debate with the applicant whether they cover the these in full, but following English heritage intervention, they now agreed to cover these in full. And the English heritage in touch with me today have asked that, um, 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 that these be triggered no later than phase two of the scheme. So if a note could be made of that in the recommendation, please. But we feel that with this package of uh, measures, uh, it, it achieves a heritage gain and therefore mitigates against the fairly minor harm um, of the scheme. And so is therefore neutral in the planning balance. A, a complex issue is, is the site is covered by a special policy in the local plan, which says that the scheme should not prejudice future um, alignments of the Sittingbourne Northern Relief Road. Um, um, and, and there are several potential alignments. This is a complex issue, but we've negotiated with Kent County Council and the applicants a phasing scheme, which is all triggered by um, the heads of terms, which means you're not members are not making a decision on this on the Northern Relief Road now. It is reserved for the um, future decision in uh, the future local plan review. But this does um, um, allow for several different options, and those options would obviously have different yields in terms of housing, 
um, because um, of the land tax. It should note that the, this scheme would, would have um, hopefully alleviate the, the major problem with the Great T-Store Estate in this area, which is a lack of resilience in the road network, in that because it's one way, it's a huge cul-de-sac. I mean, people can struggle to get to the town centre of Sittingbourne. Um, also, um, we've negotiated um, uh, extension of the 349 bus route. As councillors may know, particularly the ward members, there's been huge problems with um, the bus gates in the Great East Hall Estate. Um, bus companies stopped using them. So we've got a contribution here towards induction bus gates and £100,000 a year for four years to extend the route 349. And this is a major consideration in the planning balance because it, it provides public transport to um, this area and will secure it for the future. Uh, as we know, most of the suburban routes in Sittingbourne have um, have been um, have been withdrawn in the last year. Um, also, uh, a major benefit would be a, a pedestrian footpath um, on Tong Road next to the 192.1 site, which would enable developed uh, residents here and in the Great East or the state to access Snipes Hill School, which is up south of the railway line. So is uh, at the moment inaccessible. So we feel that for all of these reasons, these would have major benefits in terms of making this this part of sitting board, which is a bit stuck out on the edge, integrated with um, the urban area. There are also uh, proposals for traffic calming on uh, Tong Road and Church Lane. Um, so just to briefly sum up in terms of the planning balance, um, with officers recommend, head of planning recommends that the proposed quantum of development is acceptable when assessed against the, the quite tough um, MU2 criteria and the quite considerable range of mitigations, including mitigations to the impact on the special protection area which adjoins the site, the European Protective Site. We feel it's a, it's a good quality design, which though our late open design officer Alison had a very considerable input into. And I've, and I've listed there the um, main transport benefits. Um, also, um, as, as members may know, the Great East Hall Estate had limited public facilities other than the uh, uh, village hall because a, a lot of the planning obligations went on the huge costs of bridging over the way, the swale, to Great Swale Way. So residents have always complained about the lack of facilities in this area. So what we try to prioritise is to, to fill in the missing pieces of the puzzle there in terms of providing a space which can provide a local shop, which is 15 years ago was promised to local residents. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, can I invite uh, Post Councillor um, Jill Beer, please, to speak on this item? <coughs> Mr Chairman, thank you so much for allowing me to speak. I'll just make my point very quick because I have three minutes. First of all, approximately 106 houses. We are not playing semantics. We're told that it was, well, approximately means a minimum of. No, it doesn't. So we were quoted some law in your documents. So this morning I spent a little bit of time having a look exactly what that case law was. Allow me to explain. The case between Cornwall and Council and Corbett was that they wanted more houses and sort um, rather than what they'd initially said. This was related to 15 caravans and 15 holiday homes in the main planning document that they had in Cornwall. They wanted to increase um, people visiting and uh, places for them to stay. That's why that was overridden and they allowed 100. This development does not come anywhere near 
15 caravans or 15 holiday lodges. So then I went in to see what they said. Having read the case notes today, I would like to quote from the hearing and were quoted by Mr Linton about um, Lindbergh. Says, do not overlook Law of Reed's warning that local planning authorities cannot make the development plan mean whatever they would like it to be. And this is the case where it appears, this is happening. Lindblom also says, as you've quoted, and in my view, there can be no justification to reading words into the policy that aren't there. 160 approximately, not 380 plus 14 in 2.3. Secondly, there will be a minimum, and I use the word minimum accurately, not approximately, but a minimum number of 1,630 extra car movements from this development. It'll be going down Swale Way to Grovehurst Roundabout, to Stockbury Roundabout, but we're just keeping our heads above traffic. So we'll be going down there, we'll be going down the Euroleague, another gridlock that we've been having problems with, adding more cars. If they're Wise, and, what, and this is what they're doing, and Councillor Hall will, val will actually validate this. They are going down through Merston, down Long Mass Road, through Tom Hamlets, and out onto the A2. The A2 cannot accept any more um, cars. This could lead to gridlock and lead us to be pushed to accept 1250 houses in Tenham because that's the only way we will have a, a northern relief road and that will then cause more traffic on the A2 and before you know it you'll have another 7150 houses on the southern relief road. This decision is the most important you're ever going to make because of the knock-on okay. effects. Thank you very much indeed, thank you. And we'd like um, Councillor uh, Paul Townsend, please, to speak on this item. A good evening. Edinburgh Parish Council objects to this application. Our three principal objections are overdevelopment, impact on the road network, impact on the local area. Some detail, if I may. Overdevelopment. When considering this application, please take into account the neighbouring application for 14 houses. In total, 394 houses, all using the same access road. Under bearing fruits, this plan, as already said, was earmarked for 106 houses. That's a threefold increase in the original estimation. Point number two, impact on the road network. In the supporting pack that you've given by the planning team, your own planning officers state the resilience of the road network would be worsened if the scheme was one way in and out of the site at the end of a very extended sway away. Basically, tonight, you'll be asked to hedge your bet that the Northern Relief Road will be A, approved, B, constructed. Right now, that's not guaranteed. 380 houses, 700 plus cars, plus service vehicles, around 2,000 vehicle movements per day, all using one access route. Imagine a school run. It only takes one double parked car, one broken down bus, one set of roadworks to block the access for everybody. And by human nature, it's highly likely that some people will take advantage of the emergency access route and use the gate to gain quick access via Church Road. Third and final point, impact on the local area. This site is surrounded by small rural country lanes. In many places, the roads are so tight that two cars can't pass each other. 
If approved, it's highly likely that some of these residents will choose to use the services in Tenham, where we are, or Fatsham. Residents may choose to park their cars because of the access on Church Road and access via Lower Road, which of course we know because of the multiple accidents, near misses, and sadly the fatalities. In, in addition, here at Swale, you're looking at creating cycle routes from Sittingbourne to Faversham. Increased car traffic would defeat the purpose of sustainable transport along this route. In conclusion, Ten Parish Council objects to this application on the grounds of urban development, impact on the road network, and impact on the local area. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. You know, I uh, now invite um, Glenn Middleton, please, uh, to speak on this item. Um, good evening. Um, I'm here tonight on behalf of the residents of Heronfield to the Jason development. Unfortunately, we've only been supported one day to be those three minutes. Um, and I've only been able to speak to a small percentage of my fellow residents. But I do have an understanding of the underlying issues and that we're all concerned with regarding this plan. One of the main issues is the road infrastructure and access. The road network through Heron Fields was so poorly constructed that the sort of adding to the current traffic load is extremely concerning. Indeed, it's my understanding that certain of the roads have been refused adoption by the council because of their poor build quality. Potential access to the site via Hackington Avenue, Devon Road and Dean Close, even if only for emergency vehicles, would be dangerous given the narrow roads. Poor quality. I'm not even sure why access by these rooms would be needed given the primary route shown on the plan. Access is also likely to cause additional financial hardship to the current parent building residents. We each pay towards the maintenance of the roads. <coughs> the costs would undoubtedly rise. I've said 1,600 car journeys with both different numbers, up to 2,000. This is a separate issue to the additional traffic that's going to be filtering through through a park town which will obviously to become a slow moving car park with some residents experiencing, experiencing huge delays. When there were issues on the A249, the A2 and the M2, some have even reported delays of up to two hours to get home from town. The facilities and the shops. The amended plan, there's a suggestion that a resident could access the shops in Batchel and Tenor. As you know, we've not been provided with the funds local grants. I'm not sure how access to Batchard and Tenham would be possible exiting the new development by Church Lane and next to Lane, because that's not permitted according to the plans. So the residents would need to exit via Swalway, adding to that traffic. It makes no sense. The other option is a two hour round trip to walk to Tenham's Colour. I don't think many people want to do that. In summary, the plan just did not work. The roads cannot take more cars, either structurally or by volume. The pollution levels are increasing. There are no shops planned, no additional facilities, so nothing. Amongst others, these are the issues that have been raised previously, but they seem to be ignored and simply copied and pasted into the revised plan with no attempt to answer our queries. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. <laughs> Could I now invite um, Roland Brass, please, to speak on this item? Hey, hi, good evening, members. My name is Roland Brass, the planning consultant, and I speak on behalf of Trendport, the applicant. Firstly, thank you, Andrew, for the excellent presentation. 
to kick off, it's, it is really important to say the Trend Port happily calls Swale home and have a successful relationship with the council, having been involved in the development of the Euroleague site, Great East Hall and housing at Swale Way. We see this application at Church Road as another opportunity for legacy development and stewardship and a proud scheme. We have worked very hard with the council over the last couple of years, undertaking regular planning meetings, design workshops, plus community consultation to make sure that this application is fully policy compliant, delivers meaningful benefits and has no objections from Kent County Council, National Highways, Historic England, the Environment Agency and other consultees, and we intend to sign the Section 106 agreement. The scheme is for up to 380 new homes with a retail unit which Tesco is signing contracts on. The proposals also safeguard the land for the sitting on North with Northern Relief Road. However, we do not design or, or, or develop the road or choose its route. As this decision will be for the local plan process. process. It is important to note that with the safeguarding land in that case, the site has capacity for 212 units, new homes. Um, the, the development will create a high quality, attractive, sustainable extension to sitting bourne in accordance with policy MU2 and the site allocation. We have sensitively designed the scheme with special consideration to environmental impacts, highways and access, heritage, local character, landscape to make the effective use of land. Through this site optimization to bring forward a critical mass, we are now able to deliver these significant and immediate benefits to the council and the community. A summary of benefits. We, we are going to be making the full financial contribution to circa two hundred thousand pounds towards St Giles Church to take it off the at risk register, provide new facilities and car parking to sustain it as a place of worship. We have the new Tesco store, which responds to a very popular request from residents for a local convenience store. Environmental improvements include surface water management, ensuring green field runoff rate and no harm to Merston mm -hmm. Lakes and the River Swale and a biodiversity net gain of, gain of over 10 percent. There are also open space improvements, including new open spaces, play areas and allotments, in which in combination with the improved walking and cycle routes and connectivity, they will encourage healthy lifestyles and less reliance on private cars. There are also substantial financial contributions toward the bus service, quiet roads, plus the bus link and new main access off Swale Way. Finally, the housing proposals help meet housing, housing needs and we deliver a, an affordable housing level, which is above what the policy requires. All of the benefits are intended for both new residents and the existing community. Therefore, in conclusion, I'd like to thank you for your time and we'd be delighted to bring forward this site, which supports the local plan. Thank you for your time, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mike, Councillor Henderson, did, did you just want to press it again? The, the mic stayed on. No, sorry. No, sorry. Oh. It's on. It's on. It's on. Yeah. Okay, I, I just thought you needed the exercise. <laughs> <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> okay, can I now invite uh, Councillor Baldock, please, to speak on this item. <clears throat> Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, and thank you for allowing me to speak. Uh, I, I think this uh, this application is really very premature. It's um, as one of the parish uh, parish council speakers put it. It's really begging the question of the Northern Relief Road, Southern Relief Road. We don't know if that is going to be built. We don't know when it's going to be built. It could be another 10, it could be 15, it could be 20 years away. In the meantime, this proposal would condemn another 300 plus people, uh, houses, or nearly 300 houses, to life at the end of Sittingbourne's biggest cul-de-sac. And I think that is um, a totally irresponsible thing to do. I think we should have been looking at the alternative that was in our traffic um, statement with the last draft Reg 19. I know that the officers will say that has no standing, it has blah de blah, but we should be looking at that. 
uh, and a way, an alternative route for re residents to access sitting room without having to go all the way around the Euro estate. It's just putting more people um, yeah, in a cul-de-sac where we don't know if there's going to be a Northern Relief Road or not. So we really ought to, it's premature and we ought not to be making a decision until after that decision has been made. I'd also note the um, CPRE objections on page 90 remain unresolved and I'm surprised that there hasn't been a habitat regulation assessment or if there has I can't find one referred to in the documents. Um, I think that's uh, important but really my, my point comes down to this is premature and we need a lot more information on a lot more decisions about what we're going to do with uh, certain other applications before this one is uh, considered because taken on its own it is going to leave a hell of a lot of people in a hell of a mess and not improve things for any of our current residents. Thank you Chairman. Thank you Councillor Baldock and can I just for information I've just been passed um, clarification that uh, appendix one covers your um, second point you made there Assessment. Okay, I uh, move these off the recommendation. Do I have a second, please? Councillor Martin, thank you very much. Councillor Boyne. You have to be a chef. Sorry. No. Oh, no. oh. Thank you. Um, had I not been on the committee, I would have certainly been speaking tonight regardless as a, as a war member, but I, I, I'm not a visiting member, I'm on the committee uh, this evening and there's a lot, I think, uh, to, to say about this. Uh, in, in, in all fairness, I welcome an application that has over and above the level of affordable housing that they could provide. I welcome potentially a bus service. But that's about it. The downsides for me, and this which I think are not addressed from what I can tell, is the issue that's already been mentioned about the, the bus service. Uh, we, Council Hall, as it's been mentioned already, we'll know from other areas that if we put a bus service in and it's an area restricted for a bus use, that still soon falls by the wayside because people will always find a way to circumnavigate and find an easy way out of an area. And if and I have exactly the same fears for this particular site. And when that happens, you are going to mess up not only the round the swale way, you're going to mess up around Tong, Tenham. Uh, uh, Hempstead Lane, all and the getting on to the A2. Um, I think that it is short sighted. The areas around the actual area, they're all narrow country lanes, and the and the impact that this potentially could have on the what was the one way system around Tom Triangle by Tom Mill. Um, they are that's now no longer the one way, but that whole area, uh, it is not suitable really for this sort of development. Big concerns on the roads. In terms of the amenities, uh, it's all well and good having a provision for a, a amount of money for the primary care and health provision. But from what's in within the report, it's the amount of money to go to the Memorial Hospital. That's already already struggling, and we've already had the tenant GP surgery from tenant move to the Memorial Hospital. So there isn't a GP service actually in tenant anymore or certainly for the foreseeable future. So where will it go in the memorial? The other one is to update Green Porch. 
well, with all due respect to Greenport, you haven't got the best reputations at the moment any, <laughs> anyway. Um, so I question how, how you're going to actually improve that with the numbers of additional patients that this is going to generate for those two practices. We've already talked about the shot. I'm not convinced uh, on that. A one test goes. Great. They're not there. I'd be interested if, it, if it's possible to be highlighted on the actual plan where that's proposed to go, because we've heard these promises in the past uh, with Great East Hall and elsewhere, and it has come to nothing. <laughs> I'm not convinced this will occur either. Which brings me on to the actual site itself. I think that this, and I get, agree with Councillor Baldock and the other speakers so far. We are creating, if this is agreed, and in, in addition to Great East Hall, it's not an estate. There is houses here that will make it the size of a village. And we are not creating a village within the borough. And it's not drawing in the amenities that a village would actually have. I question whether actually we could argue that it's over intensification. And that's purely on that, from it should be in the current plan, 106 dwellings, not three times the size of what's being proposed. I think the the access route, yes, say the, the traffic issues are not addressed in one way in, potentially one way out, until they discover the rat run. Uh, or for emergency vehicles. I think there is a heck of a lot of this application that is going to leave the residents of Great East Hall. And the other point actually just comes to mind as I said, Great East Hall. It is not fair on the residents of Great East Hall to have their <coughs> rights, which they pay for as private residents, to be funded to get onto a new estate. That is totally out of out of order for and, and out of for expectation of residents to pay for that. Um, it, it it staggers belief at times. Um, so I am not in favour of this. Surprise, surprise. Uh, I think it's doing a disservice to those residents that are there. It will cause a huge impact potentially on other areas, particularly if there is access to the A2 and air quality. And so many things will be at the detriment if this application was agreed. And that doesn't even get onto the Northern Relief Road as well, which I think is a far more important one with the issue that is played down by this application. Uh, I'm not going to be supporting this, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Hall, please. Thank you, Chairman. I'd just like to mention, Lloyd, this doesn't only affect Town Great East Hall, it affects Heron's Fields as well. <laughs> um, I'd like to refer back to an article that was in a local newspaper almost 20 years ago. One of the biggest developments ever proposed for Sittingbourne has received Swale Borough Council's backing. The proposed East Hall development at Burston, closely linked to the development of the Northern District of York, NDR, was given overwhelming support by councillors at the council planning meeting. Developer Trentport had offered 4.4 million towards the Northern Beach Road and the community service that accompanied to the Great Stall Farm development. Now, if this had been done as promised, the NR, the Northern Relief Road done, perhaps this application might have been just a little bit more favourable. The promise was never kept. Right, we're moving on to the second part. The application for 106 homes, they are proposing 380 by significantly encroaching into the countryside, yet they are not providing any real benefits to the people. They are saying it should be 10% affordable, as that is what the allocation requires. However, 380 homes is not in accordance with the allocation. The council should be pushing for more affordable homes on a higher number and requiring a viability appraisal to demonstrate why a higher percentage is not provided with a higher number of homes that should be viable. The proposal is very close to St. Giles Church. Here, it could really harm the setting of the listed building and the town conservation area. All traffic will enter and leave via an extension to Swale Way. This will make matters so much worse for residents of East Hall Farm and Muston. It will be horrific, further letting down the people of Heronfields and Great East Hall. Lastly, 
there are no proposed connections to Lomas Road or over a river line today to this scheme creates an island. 380 homes, but no school provision or nursery provision. More cars driving to the nearest primary school, creating further chaos. What else? No, I'll forget that point. The scale of growth is what exactly the council should be fighting against. Instead, planning for growth that delivers growth for infrastructure. That's me finish. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Winkers, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. Actually, I did drive uh, back from Faversham today, actually, through a route I would obviously not normally use because of this um, meeting tonight. When I first uh, arrived tonight, I was leading towards the uh, back end of the proposals, but listening to the speakers so far and witnessing the narrow roads, etc., I feel that my uh, thoughts on it have totally changed. Uh, for the reasons I won't repeat what the other speakers have said, and I think I will be going into your recommendations. But one other point to make is if it was passed tonight by the committee, it states here the, that there will be allocated land left for the final stage Northern Relief Road. So if it goes uh, for um, approval out for outline, I want it to basically make clear or clarify that there will be space left for the and relief road. Can we, anybody come back on that, please? Yes, uh, Councillor, if you look at the uh, recommendation that has the terms, the very first item, it, it clearly states that uh, there should be no development on that land uh, while the issue of termination of the Northern Relief Road is, uh, is, is, um, is off for discussion in the local plan for 10 years. So it gives a, a 10 year freeze on um, on that area of land, phase three, three and four on, on the phase of the land. OK, thank you. Professor Hunt, please. Thanks, Chair. And um, I've looked at this very closely because um, it is really complicated um, with the policies that are here, that the stage that we're at with pausing the local plan view, the fact that we haven't got the five year house in supply and, and what the report has been done with great emphasis on the balance of all of this, um, it's, it's not an easy one to, to consider. A couple of things that we've heard that I think traffic is, is one big thing that we are hearing. Um, but as as we have with pretty much every committee we go to, there's always a concern and problems on highways. And we've pretty much always got KCC highway saying there's no problem. Um, it is difficult for us to be able to turn around and, and say that they are wrong. Um, and I think this this is one of those cases again where we, we are going to be finding it difficult to, to say that they are wrong with, without the evidence. One clarification I do just want to get is that we're told within this that there would be safeguarded land for the, the Northern Relief Road, and I, I agree with that, how, how it's shown without phases three and four coming forward. There is some land there where a Northern Relief Road could go. Um, but looking at it, it does seem to me that phase two is, is within some of the land that within the local plan is within the safeguarded area. So can I just clarify that point before I go on? Yeah, Mr. Langton. Well spotted. Um, um, there were three potential routes, and here we're referring to what's called the northern route, the, new, the route that goes north and then past St. Charles Church goes due south. Um, we felt that in practice that we would go slightly to the south to avoid harming the setting of St. Giles Church and, and to make sure it goes south and avoids Bexley's Farm, which is grade two star, which is slightly to the east. So it was slightly looking ahead, but we felt that you know not all of the land in the AS1, AS1 in very good plan, needed to be safeguarded, about 80% of that needed to be safe to be to keep options open. Okay, thank you. So, so we, 
obviously told that, okay, so there is some land in phase two that would have been safeguarded if we would carried on with the local plan review and started looking at this. Um, so it, where we're told that this is fully compliant with the policy, that's MU2, I don't believe it is. We, we're just told there that we've got phase two within that and it's been decided through this application that there's a better route to go through and push in that Northern Relief Road towards the south because it's been looked at to say that there is um, concerns on the listed buildings. That hasn't been tested for a local plan process. It hasn't gone through the local plan review. Um, we haven't got that testing. It's just a case of being done through a, a planning application. So I do have some concern there. Um, and we're almost saying by allowing this, we will go through and just the full area of search is either recognised anymore. So that's something which I think weighs against it rather than um, all the positive benefits that there are. I do understand about the 10 year and I think it says actually in the thing 20 years that it shouldn't be coming forward, but 10 years that there was a review. But when we look at the conditions, and if I just go to those now and find them. Um, <coughs> the conditions, the first one, uh, the time limit of outline schemes. The development to which the permission relates must be begun no later than expiration of five years, which is OK because they could start uh, phase one and two. But the, the time limit, phase three and four, just try and find these right. Uh, I'm just trying to find the actual right condition, but basically in the conditions it says that the reserve matters need to come forward within seven years. And I think there's another one that says five years. So that the times within the conditions are conflicting. How, how can we say that reserve matters can be coming forward um, before there's actually going to be a review on that land? Um, I'll just try to find the reading for again. So time limit on one outline plan of permission in the cases of phases one and two, or nine years in the cases of three and four, or two years for the final approval of reserve matters. So it's within within the 10 years that we're asking and we're saying that they have to come forward within nine years. And that is similar to um, condition two, where we're saying that phase three and four has to be within seven years. So that is just conflicting with what we're being told within those. I think on the part of the roads, Whilst KCC say it's acceptable where they're looking at it in a safety terms, I think the, what I am seeing with lots of these and experiencing it at the moment elsewhere in the borough is that KCC never actually look at the design of this and how it's actually going to impact the people living there. And you do see already at Great East Hall and we've heard Heronfields, the problems that they have there with having to, to come out onto that road being promised that there would be a Northern Relief Road at some point in the future and it never actually happening. Um, I think that's actually how this has come forward. We're still just adding to that route without a Northern Relief Road and knowing how that's going to come forward is actually poor design. And we're told in national policy now that design is something we really should be pushing on. And even at an outline stage, we're, we're not saying that okay, there's design of housing but the layout of this, the way that the road is going into there, we, we've already experienced the problems and I think it's poor design. So I think with, with those two major issues all around highways, but in a different context to, to the safety, um, I think with the balance, I don't think it should be approved. I think we take into account of the, the five year supply and all the benefits that it does bring. Um, doesn't weigh up the balance from what I can see at the moment. Okay, thank you. Uh, I've now got Councillor Bonning, please. 
Thank you. Um, I'm the adjacent wall councillor and had considerable experience and pain with the development of Stones Farm and not least internal road layouts in which I insisted we as a council got independent advice because we are wholly responsible for a state layout. And I think Heron Fields and Great East Hall is a great example of where that possibly didn't happen and should have happened and would have had a huge impact on the residents and the users of the roads along there, not least the inability to adopt roads because they were of poor design. Um, my main and primary concern around this application is the rural lanes and the conservation area of Tong, which um, is adjacent to my ward. Um, we have recently done a heritage review and conservation area review. And I think anyone that's been around by the mill will know how extremely narrow that is. And my fear by creating this long term cul de sac with no definitive out um, is that people will park on the rural lane side rather than within the development because they'll avoid going through Sittingbourne Town Centre and so they'll use the rural lanes in which to park. Now it talks about traffic calming because clearly the quiet lanes policy as we all found out on the JTB I think was the one I chaired that actually KCC do bugger all around quiet lanes and it's ineffective. Um, I really want to understand what traffic calming means if this is mitigation for this scheme, because I think we've all seen uh, traffic calming around Sittingbourne and some really dire examples, including Swan Street Avenue. Um, and I wouldn't want to live next door to a road hump, um, you know, outside my property. And I think possibly that might be some example of what they're doing, but maybe some clarity on that. What I'm also concerned about is phasing and triggers. In the list, we've got some items which say prior to phase one. I think the previous just speakers just talked about seven years, 10 years and beyond. And what we absolutely need is certainty on the section 106 as this is mitigation for the harm of the development. And if we are putting forwards that only phases one and two effectively going to get built out with no certainty around the latter phases. Um, what exactly as a council are we going to receive? Now I hear that the work around the church will come earlier on. However, some of these other costs are not clear as to what we're getting when. And I think this is absolutely critical. Because if we're not receiving that money early on, or that indeed there is a clawback facility, these promises will be hollow and empty. And we cannot, as a council, go down the road of what we have has happened over the last 20 or 30 years, where we're promised things and they are never delivered. Which brings me on to something else. I have spent now the best part of the last 18 months hassling the CCG and the ICB about the appalling state of our GP facilities and the lack of GPs in Sittingbourne and the villages. Um, they have now finally agreed and appointed to do a health needs assessment. That work, I understand, is just starting. They will not get a conclusion to that for the next four months. So when they talk about oh, some works to the memorial, and I think anyone who's a patient there will know it's a nightmare trying to get an appointment. We're going to pile in a whole load of residents who have no choice but to go to either the memorial or to possibly Green Porch or to East Street, and East Street's expansion is dependent on a developer developing out. We can't keep going down this route. Now, we're not responsible for those services, they are, but they are undertaking what is an essential piece of work to understand what our GP and health needs are. We don't even have an emergency doctor's facility in Sittingbourne. Um, the other thing in here under section 106, KCC have asked for money for a secondary school. This would be 
the Northwest Sittingbourne School, which is quite some considerable way from this site. The nearest school would be Sittingbourne Community College. Now, this new Sittingbourne School has been held up for years by the Simmon. It's not been delivered. KCC have been absolutely hamstrung in their ability to deliver this school. It seems a little ironic that they're wanting to put the money from this development into Northwest Sittingbourne. Um, the other one is around safeguarding and this sort of presumption around the Northern Relief Road. I, I absolutely agree, this is rare, with Councillor Hunt <laughs> on where that is in terms of design and the possible design and layout for this scheme and phasing is how can we safeguard an area and effectively have a good design for an estate when we are holding a large chunk available for a road which may or may not ever happen. To me that is poor design. What is contained under the planning system is about deliverability, so not a lot of this is going to be delivered in the next five years, and certainty and actually what this application doesn't do in my mind is deliver us certainty. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I've now got Councillor Henderson please. <laughs> Thank you Mr Chairman. I'd like to go back to um, Councillor Hunt said and he I think I'm right in saying he's really the only councillor who has addressed this in the way we have to make our decision. It's not about whether we like this development, it's about whether we have evidence that it should go through or whether we have evidence that it should not go through. And it does seem to me uh, and, and Councillor Hunt very correctly said it's complicated uh, and I've tried certainly to read it through very carefully and as far as possible understand it and I do think we have to come back to the key issue if policy ME2 is being met by this development then we almost certainly have no basis to refuse it. If, on the other hand, it is not compliant with policy ME2, then presumably we, we can actually say almost automatically um, that, that it should not be accepted if it is not compliant with our local plan. Personally, I'm not quite sure why the applicant is, uh, is putting it forward. It, it's clearly going to take a long time to, uh, to move ahead uh, and maybe it'd be a lot better if, uh, if the developer would, would come back in five years' time. But the development is in front of us and we have to look at it. So I would very simply like to ask the question of the appropriate uh, officer to explain why a policy which was intended to put in 106 houses is still compliant if we want to put in, or we don't want to, if the developer wishes to put in 380 houses because that to me seems to be the crux of the whole issue. Thank you. Thank you. Mr Langton, please. Um, yes, and um, the, the other councillor asked a similar question. Um, it's to do with the issue that the parish councillor raised, um, the Carmarth case. There, the uh, uh, the court has said you cannot insert a word into a local plan, such as only. You should only grant permission for 180. Um, 
the, the principle that was established by the court is that an allocation establishes the principle of development and saying that uh, um, you'll grant 118 or 12 caravans or whatever, simply say you'll grant 180 or 12, then you have to consider um, the rights and wrongs of a different number, a lesser number or greater number against the principles of the policy. In this case, with the relief road, we'll be up to 212. There have been quite a few cases where you've approved more, such as the MU2 site. You've encouraged high densities on allocated sites because it reduces future allocations on green field sites. And there's been three or four cases like that in the last two years. We feel following a uh, detailed review that um, it would meet all of the criteria of MU2. We, um, the design is fairly symmetrical. It's in a uh, uh, a radial, and we feel it's good design with the relief throw and good design without it. it, it the, the issue of pad design doesn't come into it. We don't feel like an appeal based on the principle of design would um, would would hold water. Um, I'll leave some of the other points that have been raised to my closing comment, but I'll just pick up the point that uh, Councillor Hunt raised about the triple points. You're right, it's complicated. And it only really gets complicated if you take 10 years to produce a revised local plan. Um, so I would suggest that we looked at this in detail with the lawyers and with the applicants. We would suggest, though, that um, we have a final legal review over it, just to, to war game the potential scenarios with the local plan, just to make sure that, you know, um, all of the various conditions that, uh, which are set by statute, but we can have a longer period. And this is what we're proposing here, a longer period for phases three and four. So I think we can deal with that admittedly complex issue in that way. Um, just on the traffic issue, really can't use it on grounds of impact on the rural lines because only six dwellings would access the rural lane. Uh, and they would be improved by the by the traffic guard measure. That's a matter of detail. That's a matter of detail that we can deal with reserve matter applications. It does not go to the part of the application. We have asked Town and Council, look, if there was never a relief road, I mean, it was just a giant runway system, would that be a reason for fuel for the minister? No. It would be less than ideal, but it would not be a reason for fuel. So we would not be able to sustain an appeal on, on traffic grounds um, in, 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 that, in that case. Also, I should note, this is the first major case at which national highways have said, look, we're not going to put a granting condition on for growth first, because that matter will be dealt with by 2024 with the um, funded improvements. So we're not going to raise that as an objection. I know a number of people have mentioned that. Thank you. Can I just ask a supplement, Mr. Keller? Yes. That being the case, is it your view um, that there is any justification for turning this application down? Well, it's for members to put for potential review as a reason. And then we can say, look, we are hiding to nothing on that. We know the advice we've given you on a number of cases where we've had partial award of costs against us, particularly on the issue of um, the tilted balance. The tilted balance applies here because the plan is, is expired. It has to be reviewed within five years and because we don't have a five year land supply. But we're tantalisingly close to getting there. And if these schemes are approved tonight, you would have it. And you can say it's once from having you look. You know, taking back control. We can refuse schemes that are outside the local plan. And you can only do that if you approve schemes that are allocated in the local plan. Okay, thank you. Um, Councillor Hall, please. Before we move on, I just want to ask Andrew a question. Is there any documentation explaining how the Northern Relief uh, land will be safeguarded in a legally and secure and acceptable way? I would refer you to the recommendation. I'll find you the page. Um, it's the beginning of the head of terms. I still think it's falling off. Here we go. Page 167, stamp page 167, where you see there's two pages explaining it. Um, um, Councillor Hunt raised the issue about, you know, if you don't safeguard all of AS1, you know, it's not in 
alignment with the plan. But I just point out what AS1 says. It says development proposals likely to reduce or remove the consideration of route options or preclude achievement of the road will not be permitted. We feel that the, it, it, the emission of a small area of phase two would be acceptable because the option study that was done by Kent County Council about eight or nine years ago, prior to bearing fruits, did not consider in any way, shape or form archaeological or historical issues. So therefore, we feel that a slightly over large area of land was, um, was safeguarded and, and there'd be no prejudice to realistic express realistic route options for the Northern Relief Road if that small area was included. That's a part of please. Thank you, Chair. I think a lot of people have covered things. I, I, I was amazed. I liked the first speaker and they, they drew the attention to it quite well. Approximately is close to. I don't see how increasing it by 274 houses is close to. And we often hear and we're always told that each case is judged on its own merits. So I think, you know, there may be in case law for Holiday Park, but that may not be relevant in this case. The safeguarding of the land for the Northern Relief Road, I think Councillor Bordock was right. This is too premature for this. I don't think it guarantees that. Um, the Northern Relief Road, I think the people particularly of Great East Hall, Merston and other areas have always been promised things and it's never been delivered. So to be honest, that to me shows very little weight for me to actually put my heart and soul behind this application. There's talk about the bus routes and, and improving them and, and perhaps someone could at the end of this tell me what an induction bus gate is. I'd be interested to know what that is. But um, and also it was covered, I think it was Councillor Bowen, covered about the general practice. I think all councillors here will be receiving complaints from residents trying to contact their GP. It doesn't matter how much money you throw at the system. If there's no doctors, then you, you, it's, it's, the, the, it's becoming unsustainable to keep approving so many large applications. And I know that all the funding for the primary school is going to the school in Tenham, which in my view will force more traffic because I don't see primary age children standing at bus stops waiting for a bus to take them to school. It will be by vehicle, it will be by car, and it's going to travel into air quality areas. It's going to affect the air quality. It's going to congest the rural roads. And I know people say KCC say it's going to be all right, but if you drive around anywhere in Sittingbourne, or Sheppey, anywhere in Swale, and probably all through Kent, you will find many people say when they're stuck in traffic, the developers don't know what they're talking about, or the planners, because it's the people who face the issues. And I don't feel I can support this. I don't feel it's sustainable. I think it's going to increase air quality, possibly in four air quality management areas, certainly in Tenement or Springe. And I don't feel I can support it on air quality grounds. I think the highway safety issues, particularly around some of the villages, and Tom, it, it's just it's just going to destroy Tong as it is. And we keep hearing about case law. Yeah, there might be case law saying that your plans are out of date, but I've got one here, Gladman's development, which is um, August 2021, which actually put a coach and horses through the uh, the idea of the tilted balance being the be all and indoor. What it says is you have to, as a decision maker, give each thing its, its due weight. It's down for the decision maker to decide the weight, not the officers. And I think all the speakers, the people from the parish council, the member of the public, the councillors here have all basically said the same thing. It's too large. It's going to devastate Tom. It's going to put a lot of pressure on the local roads. We have a GP infrastructure that can't cope. And the air quality is going to be affected and made worse in, in certain two AQMA areas, if not more. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just going to bring our legal officer in now, if I may. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. I just needed to come back on a couple of points that uh, Councillor Palmer's raised there. Um, just to clarify, um, you were talking about the, uh, the, the, the continued 
permitting of, of residences, dwellings, etc., and a lack of infrastructure, which I know everybody completely understands. And, and a suggestion, I think you were implying that, you know, throwing money at the problem isn't really enough. Um, you know, we all we can do as Swale Borough Council is collect the money that's requested by the consultees. We can't, as Swale Borough Council, deliver new highways. We're not a highway authority. We can't deliver new healthcare facilities. We're not the, um, the CCG, forgive me, they're not called that anymore. Um, we facilitate because we're the local planning authority, it's our statutory duty to ensure that impacts are mitigated. And we do that by consult consulting these bodies. They tell us that they want that money to put towards these improvements and we collect it on their behalf. I appreciate sometimes it seems like they're not delivering that infrastructure, but that's not something that Swale can control. We can influence, we can, as Councillor Bonnie's been doing, lobby, but we can't deliver that ourselves. The only way we can mitigate is to collect the money that's requested. And if KCC, the CCG, whoever that body is, tells us that they need that money for that project, it's because their commissioning plans have identified that improvement. And we have to go along with that. We have to take them at their word on that because that's how the planning system works. Um, and in terms of the Gladman's case and weight, I don't know the precise case because obviously you said it's a Gladman's case from 2021. There are probably a considerable number of Gladman, Gladman cases from 2021 <laughs> because they're quite litigious. Uh, we have two ongoing appeals with Gladman's at the moment. However, the weight, you are quite correct, the weight to afford to policy is within the guise of the, de the decision maker, so long as it's done rationally and lawfully. And the local plan policies, 11D is at play. We don't have a five year land supply. The plan is more than five years old. However, where those policies are still in general conformity with national policy, you are quite correct. We can still afford weight to them. It's where those policies are not in conformity with current national policy that we cannot place reliance on them. So part of what you said is correct. But I just need to clarify that we can't just say we don't need to worry about the tilted balance. We don't need to worry about the plan being out of date. We can decide what weight to give to policies. You can, but you have to do that within the scope of the law. And the law says if your plan is out of date, if your policy is not in conformity with national policy, you cannot give it significant weight. So I just wanted to make that clear. Thank you. Thank you. If you allow me, that 2021 case was overturned by the Court of Appeal in 2022. So uh, we have referred in, in many in many committee reports the findings of the 2022 case, which set out the provisions of the tentative plan. So you, you're talking about Gladman's and Corby Council, and well, that, that was wrapped up in the later first and Paris Council South of the Big and Chatter Beauty case. Yeah. Thank you. I've got Councillor Marchington and Councillor Valentine. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Uh, I'm not going to go against what anyone said. It said it's an argument covering most of the bits and pieces, but we keep referring back to what is the law, what is the system, and what we've got to obey. And we've got a, a, a draconian sort of situations put in, and we've all got to be lackeys to it for some reason, you know. But I want to take you back a bit. Tom. The UK didn't used to be like this. Just after the Second World War, we built new towns large new towns and everything was always done that all the roads the motorways the infrastructure everything was in place before you ever build the houses and that's the way we work so the system was better then and i'm pretty certain we didn't have more money after the second world war than we have today yeah. um, if you look at the way other countries are doing it now uh, if anybody go to india take some time out and go to the north to the, to the himalayan foothills and you watch to see how developments really taking place and you'll see, you'll go through a Japan area, there's a six lane motorway. Don't know if Hard Shell was ever 70 metre clear bits in, like a little, you can pull off anywhere and go in, in a, a, a little industry has been built up alongside it. But the roads are all in place. The, the road, the, there's got street lights there, the grass verges, papers, and nothing's been built. Then you'll see one complex going up, how's it been built without some, some developments taking place? And we were driving through the Japan area. About 50 miles an hour and took us 45 minutes just to go for one that section alone. So other countries, supposedly with less wealth than us, are showing us the way home on how to 
go about designing their, their, their business. So our, my comment tonight is we keep taking up to draconian measures by from, from the government, which is merely trying to chase money. And that's all we're doing here. And, and basically, we, we're expected to do the same. At least we can say every house built will pay rates for at least 45 years. That adds up to a lot of wealth, but that's all we're looking for. And I'm sorry, that's the way I see the system. That's all I need to say to my opinion. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Valentine, please. Thank you. Um, I agree with uh, Councillor Baldrock's comment. I think this um, proposal has been put forward prematurely. Uh, because it all really hangs on this safeguarding for the Northern Relief Road and um, whether or not that relief road uh, would ever get built. Um, now, on page 194 is a map of the phasing, which was one of the uh, maps that was shown in the presentation. I'm afraid the key on this map is uh, challenges my vision beyond its limits. Um, and I can surmise, which I think the phase one, phase two, phase three, and phase four, I'd be grateful if the officer could actually confirm um, the, the interpretation that's following on. Um, and then I wonder, so supposing um, we build the Northern Relief Road, so only phase one, phase two, go ahead. Now, as I understand it, that isn't really compliant with policy MU2 because the numbers are 212, I think, or 106, and we've heard that it takes extra land that's not in MU2. Um, now, one uh, of the impacts that's identified in the papers before us is on air quality, and I'll refer you to page 140 and 141 which identifies an impact on the air quality management area in East Street, which is, uh, has been one of the more troublesome air quality management areas for us. Now, we are slowly um, improving air quality in the borough. It's slowly coming down. Um, and it concerns me that if this development goes ahead, um, it will put the East Street AQMA out of compliance again. And this is, of course, compliance with the current law. Um, we know there are still health impacts, even if the policy is compliant with the current UK or EU limits, uh, particularly on children's health. And there is pressure on the UK to reduce their air quality um, limits. Um, so I think that's something that's uh, up well from the in, in the Environment Act and the government haven't yet set what those limits would be, although they should have set them by now. Um, so if those limits aren't then reduced, that puts us in an extra heap of trouble. Um, it may be that they're reduced before this development ever gets built. Now one of the uh, so this this identifies a, an air quality harm of 106,000 pounds. One of the things that may be um, in the proposal that would help mitigate air quality is the support of the bus route that we've heard about. But that support is only for three years. And as surely as night follows day, you know, as soon as that support disappears, the bus route will disappear. And we're just seeing that happening right now in the borough. Right? Many of our um, suburban bus routes include and rural bus routes, including ones in this area, and then they're going to cease. So I think. Support for three years is a very poor deal for the last uh, impact on air quality. Um, now, supposing only phase one and phase two get built if we grant permission tonight, what I'm not clear about is what would follow in the section 106 agreement. What benefits would we get if we only get section 102? Do we still get the 200k from St Giles's Church? Do we still get the new Tesco store? And, and so on, or what are those um, benefits contingent on phase three and four also doing it? Uh, and finally, I'd just like to point, I mean, I mean your people who, who know me on this committee is I've always got an eye for energy efficiency. I appreciate this is an outline planning permission, but I would like to see it considered in the outline because the energy efficiency of the buildings you can build depends upon their, their layout and their orientation. Um, and we usually have a little condition about um, construction. I can't remember the exact wording of it, but there is a policy in the Bearing Fringe Plan about energy efficiency. I would just like some reassurance that that I, I can't see it in the conditions. 
quite possibly I've missed it on the 200 odd pages, but so please do correct me if I am. Would you like to comment on? Um, yes, uh, yes, Chair. Um, first, I'd deal with everything. Um, Councillor Bonnet's point. Um, Head County Council and the Highways Authority, they um, do deal with internal road layouts where they are highways. Not all schemes are adopted. Um, uh, East Hall Farm was not adopted. Um, Stones Farm um, and was specifically designed not to be adopted. So, in those cases, we have had to judge ourselves. The internal road there. There is no intention of this scheme for it not to be adopted. So they don't adopt. They have a policy. That no, they don't adopt roads that are not to their standards. They don't have a policy of. In fact, they have a statutory duty under the Highways Act to adopt roads. I know this for a fact. And in fact, member uh, 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 residents can lobby the local highway authority to adopt the roads. Which is section twenty six of the Highways Act. Um, deal with the other issues. Um, uh, there have been extensive discussions regarding air quality with mid Kent air quality. Um, 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 it, it only trips the air quality management area at East Street in cumulative impact with other schemes, and that is considered in the EIA. And in accordance with guidance across Kent, we have negotiated the first scheme in uh, Swale uh, to do this issue. Um, of contributions to what's called damage costs, which is contributions to um, improve um, and to mitigate against air quality, which are being negotiated in a cross Kent tariff. So we don't feel that that would be a, a, a real reasonable a reason for um, refusal. A comment was made that the extra land was not in MU2. That's not quite correct. It's a misinterpretation. All of the land is within MU2, so all of the land is allocated. The issue of debate was the small area of land outside the AS1 safeguarding for the relief road. So all of the, it, it is um, is um, covered. Energy efficiency, the difficult issue, there is a policy in the local plan, but it doesn't get standards. And uh, on appeal, where we have um, sought conditions, we have had partial award of costs against us on Wines's land. So it's been a matter of principle until we um, mm. Um, review the local plan, and it's another good reason to hurry up the local plan. Is is we cannot put energy efficiency conditions on residential components uh, of schemes to a specific standard. Um, on three appeals, inspectors have rejected that, and when we've had expert evidence on it, we've lost costs against this. What we can do is put condition on to green standard um, on the non on the commercial elements of schemes because that's specifically mentioned in in the relevant. Um, Local plans. I can refer members if they wish to this second of the report. Um, but the, uh, I should also state that the EIA includes a specific section on energy, and there is an energy study that accompanies the scheme. But the actual details would be dealt with um, at reserve matters uh, stage, as it's an outline scheme in all matters of property access. Okay, thank you. Councillor Martin, please. Thank you, Chair. This is a very complex one, and it is one that we have no doubt poured over all of us in the brief time that we've had the documents for. Uh, quite frankly, I'd rather have had two weeks to read it than, than, than a simple weekend this time round, given how complex this scheme is. That being said, we've heard from the officers and we've read through. Everyone's mentioned highways, and actually the Highways Authority and the National Highway say, we ain't winning the appeal on that. Developer takes us, well, it takes us, and we've used that as a reason for objection. We're losing, we're getting called unreasonable, straight off the bat. So we've got to discredit that. We can't win that way. We have to remember uh, outright that you know we're no longer supposed to be looking for reasons to object to applications. We're supposed to look for the reasons why we should be improving them. That's the way the law's been rewritten. It's not our choice. It's not the choice of this committee. It's not the choice of the officers. That's the choice of central government. So we've not got the highways there. I myself don't like the idea that we end up with 300 and some odd in a cul-de-sac or 200 and some odd when there's a relief road. But that tells me that the previous local power plan was badly written and the policy wasn't right. Surely it should have been saying that this site cannot come forward until such times as the Northern Relief Road is built. But that's not what it said. So we can't rely on that. We get screwed over by the fact that policy wasn't well thought out. And that's why you delay a local plan. 
because you make sure the policy is right and fit for purpose for the long term. So you don't get issues like this coming forward in the future. We have to have clarity from central government. And whatnot. That's why you delay. It's sensible. Sometimes you have to take uh, the long term view and the long term view means you pause, you think, you breathe, you look over what's coming forward. Yes, I think some of it is premature to come forward now, but it has come forward and we've got no choice but to look at what's in front of us and what policies currently apply. Uh, we might not be able to put in our usual favourite uh, condition of 50% uh, above building regulations for energy efficiency because we might lose that appeal. But we can say very bluntly in front of the developers when they're here, we would look more favourably on the reserve matters applications that come forward that include passive house status for some of the dwellings or that deliver micro uh, energy generation through the full use of solar panels on roofs and whatnot. We can say that here and they can choose whether they listen or not. There are items within the scheme that are appealing. Over the top of the current local plan um, percentages for affordable housing, but not over what was being considered in the local plan review. And of course, that's the downside of causing a local plan review. You don't get those policies that we really want right now. I still can't decide where I'm going to go because part of me is sitting here going, from the emotional point of view, this is wrong. It shouldn't go forward from an emotional point of view, but that's not how planning works. We have to use the logical parts of our brains and say, does it comply with the policy or not? If it does, where do you go? Where's your defence? Are we putting ourselves on a hiding to nothing by saying this scheme that we have read through and shows that it complies with a policy that many of us don't agree with? Many of us thought was a bad local plan policy at the time. But it complies with it. How do you defend? That's the direction we're at. And I've heard nothing yet tonight that says that we've got something we can defend. And I don't think that our pockets are deep enough to defend. Thank you. Councillor Hunt, please. Thanks, Fred. Let me come back, Chair. And I just wanted to come back on a couple of points of what I said. Um, okay, a couple of points that um, Mr. Layton said about design and with highways not being able to, to pick it up. And, and I know Mr. Layton knows a lot more. <laughs> that planning than I do, but just to talk, say where I'm coming from on this one. The National Design Guide um, that is in place, and so this is just explaining where I, I'm seeing it and where I'm coming from, is the very first part in the introduction of that design guide states that a place is more complex and multifaceted than a building. And it goes on, it is made up of buildings and also landscape and infrastructure, which are likely to endure longer than the buildings themselves. In the very first part of that design guide, it's taken it away from buildings and mentioning the infrastructure. Um, in, in the report, again, it does state in, in there, um, in 12.83, it's recognising there that the end of the long cul-de-sac problem would be exasperated if this application were to be permitted as a one way in, one way out road without safeguarding potential for access to the A2. Now it is safeguarding some area for the, the access to the A2, but it is also at the same time recognising that it is an end of a long cul-de-sac and there is a problem. So with, with that, with taking that area of land out of um, the AP, one, two, one it is. Um, that that's where I'm coming from. Of what what that land is taking out. We're not leaving that whole area of search, and it is creating, from what I believe, to be uh, poor design. It was also mentioned about how that has been looked at with the Northern Relief Road and the impact on listed buildings around that area. And I do understand that. Um, it was mentioned there was a study nine years ago. But the local plan was only looked at as an inspector in 2017. Only six years ago, an inspector was accepted that we have got a policy there that has got a map showing what that area of search is. And if KCC was saying that there's a report and there was no need to look at the further north and the other areas, um, then that should have been put into the local plan at that time. Thank you. Councillor Boyne, please. 
Thank you. Thank you. Let me quickly come back to the chair. Uh, two very, very quick points. Uh, Council Parliament mentioned just to uh, elaborate a bit about uh, Tenham School for just for information. Uh, Tenham School is due for demolishing in its current state and rebuilding to be twice the size. That's based on the current needs. I don't think that would include the provision of this development on top of it because it's already oversubscribed um, and that's due to be built in the next, I'm hoping, I think, the next year. Uh, um, if it's if this development is looking to add to the to Tenham School, that's going to be a problem because that's it's not going to be capable of taking it. Um, and as an observation, um, I think it's a it is unfair um, to put on the into the, put on the onto residents that are sitting in that public gallery and that are going to be listening in and will be affected by this development. The fact that this council hasn't got a five year plan and by agreeing that this application means that we can turn down other applications down the road is disingenuous to each and every person that is in that gallery this evening. Uh, so I'm going to be quiet at that point, Mr. Chairman, but thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Bond, please. Um, yeah, so I, I'll go back to some of my original points. Um, and I think the officer mentioned that by agreeing this, we are effectively narrowing down route options in the future for this Northern Relief Road. Well, you talked about going round Tong and that it would effectively have to go. It, 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 all it does is means that if all three of the options remain, except that it meant one alignment of one of the three options would would go, which we'd never approve anyway. So we felt it was uh, reasonable. I should stress that all these issues about what can we permit now and not be premature in terms of the Northern Relief Road, they were all dealt with by the Bearing Fruits Inspector seven years ago. And this is the outcome of that. So MU2 and policy AS1 were the outcome of that. And it cannot be reasonably considered premature to, 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 to refuse a scheme that, that goes with the grain of the wording of the policy that was written by the inspector, specifically to allow to uncertainty that. Speaking about the Tenham School, um, we've planned with Kent County Council in the old Red 19 for uh, a considerable expansion around Batchild. Um, um, several schemes are no longer going forward after traffic modelling. So the capacity of the school, this effectively substitutes for some of the schemes along the A2 that we've now dropped after consideration of, of their traffic impact. So it, it, it is it is allowed for in the school place plan. OK, can I come back? I was actually present at that local plan hearing mm. um, and it was a shambles in this council, I'm afraid to say. It was embarrassing um, and it was making policy on the hoof, which is why we've ended up with the policies that we have, um, which are less than desirable. Um, and part of, I understand, the local plan being in the current state it's in is we're waiting for the levelling up legislation, primary and secondary legislation to come through or we get hit with even bigger numbers, um, which is what I think the communities that we represent um, don't want. However, we have to determine what is in front of us. And I think we all know from the legacy of what we have in front of us um, and with things like bus gates, which have been an utter disaster, um, we can see what's happened historically. They have been a disaster. Um, they've caused all sorts of community issues. Um, I haven't had an answer as to what will happen around those rural lanes when people start parking on them? Because as far as I, I understand, I don't think we can put in here a requirement that we start putting double yellow lines around rural lanes to stop them parking at the edges of developments, which is what will happen. So whilst we might say, well, we won't have a leg to stand on an inquiry, it's about the cumulative impact of lots of issues around this and the context of this site and sustainability on an overarching basis. So I hear what you say. Unfortunately, I think I understand what has happened and the end of cul-de-sac that we've ended up with here. And I certainly don't want to exacerbate that. 
Thank you. Uh, apologies, I did answer Councillor Bonner's point earlier about, about parking. Um, it is possible to put traffic regulation orders on rural lanes. The problem is enforceability. You, you, you can't force them in rural areas. So, um, Kent Cat Council are not in favour of that. However, they consider it to be a fairly remote risk and one that's only really in place um, while the Northern Relief Road, if you hear goes ahead, is, 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 um, is, is not in place. Also, she asked, what is an induction bus gate? Well, it's designed to resolve the problems we've had seen from the terrible bus gates we've had, such as at Oak Lane. It's basically what I'd like to see in Guildford, that where a bus advances, it pops into the ground and the bus, bus comes across. Sorry, Council. Well, I'm on that, Chair. I, I think Council Hall can probably explain it better, but uh, KCC don't use them now. They do have some in Canterbury, but I believe there was a serious incident in Ashford and KCC have said to us they will not have that sort of system in place on any roads in Kent. Thank you. OK, thank you. Uh, finally, Councillor Valentine, and then we'll start moving to the board. Can I just ask the officer to go through the phasing that I asked him? Yes, of course. Oh, oh yeah. um, it is stated in the report, but it's, it's scattered, so I'll bring it together for simplicity. Um, there are certain triggers that only that would occur early, such as phase one and two. So that's all the, the public transport work, the pedestrian crossing um, and the, the bus gates and the funding of the bus route, plus the um, heritage works. All of the other contributions, such as schools, etc., um, would be per unit. So they would be dependent on the size of phases one, two, three, four, and they would come through um, in elements. Um, and it's not a requirement regarding the Tesco um, because that's actually on the face of the application. Um, you'll see the location of it. There was a question on that on the on the land use um, parameter plan. It's at the centre of the scheme facing the open space. Sorry, could I ask you to refer to the? On page 194, you had in your presentation just to clarify which is page one, phase two, phase three, and phase four. And I'd also be great if you could identify the uh, Tom conservation area. Obviously, the Tom conservation area is actually south of the railway line, so it's, it's not from any of the maps. Okay. Uh, it's, it's only uh, referred to, I'm sorry, I think we're going to put it on a fair front row. Apologies. Um, um, if you stand under the bridge, you can see the site. So that's the only reason it's referred to in the heritage report. But the, the impact on the conservation area is as minuscule as you can get. Um, so if you look at it, basically, uh, if you just tell me what colours are which yeah, the, the ready scarlet yeah. is phase one, uh, the, the yellow is phase two, and I can't remember, I think the blue is phase three, and the purple is phase four. So, so so, the other way around. Yeah. yeah. So the, the, the colours are um, the, the the pink scarlet is, is phase one, the yellow is phase two, the purple is phase three, and the blue is phase four. Yeah. So you'd see that effectively the site is split in two with the various routes for the Northern Relief Road being within the, the area south of that line, which would virtually split the site in two. Thank you. And finally, I've got Councillor Martin, and then we we're going to just to clarify because the okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, members, um, we we'll take this one to the board. Then, those in favour of the officer recommendation for approval. Zero. Those against. And abstentions, please. Two. Oh, apologies, members. I didn't vote and I'm against. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just, just try to add the numbers up thinking what's happening. <laughs> so 12 against, two abstentions. So members, um,
I'm just I'm just going to briefly. I'll just I'll just briefly let our head of planning. Speak. We yes, we'll be <laughs> Um, sorry, if members wish to refuse the application, they will need to come forward with reasons for refusal, and we will do our best to advise you on the um, likelihood of those being sustainable. Thank you. Members, do you wish for a. Yep. Okay, one reason for refusal, paragraph 105 of the um, MPPF, which it states as a significant development. Should be focused on on uh, locations which which can be made uh, sustainable through limiting the need to travel and offering genuine choice of transport modes. I don't think this application succeeds in that. It forces people mainly to use the vehicle the car. Sorry, I need to remind members that this is a site that is allocated in your extant local plan, and it would have a fifteen minute bus service. Uh, within the urban area built up boundary. Yeah, Council Hunt, please. Let's just check in case Council Hunt is going to come back or because he's put the amendment, the proposal forward or he hasn't got a second, so I'll carry on anyway. Um, I, I propose that it's that the application is refused due to not complying with policy MU2 because there are policy MU2 and relating to AS1 because the phase two would encroach into the safeguarded land within AS1. Without the Northern Relief Road coming forward, then it would be a poor design. And that is policy 130 of the National Planning Policy Framework. And just to clarify on that, planning policies and decisions should ensure that development will function well and add to the overall quality of the area, not just for the short term, but over the lifetime of the development, without having clarification of the Northern Relief Road and it being in the, the long cul-de-sac as recognised in the report. Um, that's a reason why I don't think it would comply with that policy on design. And I think just those two reasons. Um, Recognising that there's the balance as well of the um, policy 11D, I think it is, that NPPF, uh, the, that negative impact, especially with the main policies, for me, is the balance doesn't weigh in favour and it should go against. Um, just to say, I think the long cul de sac okay. probably is. Andrew. The, sorry. Through the chair. Please. Sorry, through the chair. Um, the long cul de sac, I think, is a reasonable issue to argue. Um, whether or not you win on appeal is, is another matter, but you, there is certainly harm in the absence of a relief road with developing um, 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 uh, a higher number than was envisaged in MU2. Um, I don't think the other issues would necessarily, that poor design or outside the safe well, I because of the heritage condition, I think we'd have to spend a very large amount of money with heritage consultants and it'd be a waste of money. But I, but I think we possibly could have a hot one and come up with a with a wording re relating to the, the poor resilience of uh, accessing so many units off swale way in the absence of a, 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 a northern relief road more than it was in that's MU2 as adopted. Yes, thank you. And could I, I, ju I just want to bring our heritage officer in and um, for a comment. Please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I mean, it has been identified that there is some some low level heritage harm um, to the, the setting of the, the Grade One listed church, um, and also to a lesser degree to the Grade Two listed buildings at West Tong Farm. Um, Mitigations have been put forward as part of the um, development proposals 
um, including landscaping um, and um, the actual design of the scheme itself in terms of low densities in that area, the lower heights of buildings, and obviously um, it's been identified the churches on the at-risk register and, and um, it's it's in serious danger of actually closing and sort of coming at further risk um, through sort of decline as a result of that. So the the um, the funding proposals that we put forward to that um, could be argued to be a sort of mitigation measure as well, um, and should hopefully um, address the um, decline of the church and with the new um, sort of population on its doorstep. The idea is is that the funding would allow it to um, grow its congregation again and become more of a, uh, a sort of centre for uh, community um, facilities and worship. Um, I think it would be um, I mean, the main issue with the church is that its its setting will be suburbanised. Um, there's would be very very limited interpretability, if any at all, between the church and the development. So um, the heritage harm is is less than substantial, as identified in the report. Um, at a sort of lower end, low to mid, low to middle at most. Um, I think it would be quite difficult to probably sustain a, a heritage related reason for a fuse long appeal. Um, basically, the, the, the MPPF requires us to to um, balance the, the, the identified heritage harm against the public benefits of the scheme. Um, and as uh, Mr Langton has um, outlined, there are quite a few public benefits and um, that's why the, um, the recommendation um, was on balance to, well, to take into account other consideration on the heritage side of things, um, felt that the uh, public benefits outweighed the, the sort of limited heritage harm. So I think we might struggle, um, to be perfectly honest with you, to sustain a heritage related reason for refusal on this, um, although there are concerns about it um, both for myself and Historic England. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Hunt, please. Very, very, I agree with everything that's just been said there. Because, um, <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't go on heritage grounds at all. But could we just understand from heritage, from, from what's been said about the Northern Relief Road and with the phase two taking up some of the, the land that's um, safeguarded, about the heritage within the Northern Relief Road, if it did go a little bit further up to, to that north through the phase two land? what the heritage impact is that's been spoken about then. Sorry, Councillor, I was not quite clear on, on, on what you're what you're asking me there. So um, we've, we've just, just been told that yeah. the, the Northern Relief Road, mm. there was different areas where it could have gone. And that phase two land does take up some of the area of search. It's said now that because of the, uh, any heritage impacts, if the road did go to that area, um, that has already been looked at. I just wonder if you could comment on the heritage impacts from that, those studies that were done. Um, I haven't been involved in it, but clearly, um, was where the um, was the uh, the Northern Relief Road to be um, aligned um, within that sort of phase two area? Obviously, bring bring um, the road much clearer, sorry, much closer, um, bring, bring the relief road quite close to the um, the church. Um, I think there will still be significant screening between the road and the church, looking at the existing um, tree, tree cover at that location. Um, so um, again, it would be quite limited harm um, and probably uh, less harm, arguably, than the actual um, um, housing proposed at that location because um, because of the, um, the nature of, of, of a road being a low lying structure in the landscape and um, obviously the, the tree cover around the edge of the site. Um, also, there would be a change in the amount of noise and sort of general um, um, activity in the area. Um, but I think it would be hard um, to make a case that um, it would be unacceptably harmful to the setting of the church. Um, again, it's going, to, it's going to depend on the detailed design of the road to some degree. 
Okay, thank, thank you. you. Councillor Henderson. Yeah, um, uh, please note, Mr Chairman, I'm, make, I'm asking a question, not making a proposal. Is there any justification in saying that the entire application is premature until the future of the Northern Relief Road is settled? Yeah, I'll get our head of planning to, um, to comment. Thank you. Good question. I think we would struggle to say that the application is premature because it's an allocation in an extant local plan that's been through examination and that's been adopted. So it can't be judged premature because it's of, of that status. Yes, Mr. Thorne. Thank you. Good, good question. No, 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 no question. Okay, members, we're, we're just going to do um, a 10 minute recess to, to allow our head of planning and officers to, um, to discuss. Uh, of portals and um, we'll reconvene at 9.15.
Thank you all very much. I'm just uh, at this point in time going to hand over to um, our head of planning. Thank you, Chair. Um, the committee has a, a motion before it to refuse. Um, and uh, I would like to suggest that members might wish to withdraw that motion and instead defer to allow officers sufficient time to consult with council's opinion because we are struggling to um, come to uh, a reason for refusal which we would we believe would be sustainable at appeal. I also need to just put it before members that if this application were to go to appeal, given the complexity of the issues, it's likely to be a public inquiry. That's no reason not to make your decisions, mm. but I just want to outline that there are substantial costs associated with that. Um, I don't know if my legal colleague wants to say anything else. Uh, yeah, I would just reiterate what the head of planning has said. Um, I concur that if this was refused or appealed on the grounds of non-determination, it's extremely likely to be heard as a public inquiry because of the complexity. Um, we referred earlier to Gladman schemes and we, we know that we have a, a Gladman inquiry imminent for Swans Tree Avenue, which is a, choose my words carefully, a, a less complex scheme and a less complex set of reasons and interlinking policies. I would also agree that um, in my view the reason that has been put forward so far is not something that would be defensible by officers at the uh, inquiry. They would find it very hard to do so uh, and being an overturn of an officer's recommendation we would probably be looking to employ consultants to act for the council in defending the appeal which obviously comes with its own costs. Uh, in terms of the, the, sort of the, the numbers and the, the, the allocation point, I think that's something that is, uh, you know, it's something that the applicant will major on in the inquiry. Um, I'm not sure that we would be able to defend that point very strongly, um, mm -hmm. given the MPPF and the, the, the requirement to make best use of land. And another comment I would just make, obviously it's for members to decide what they want to do, but at local plan allocation stage, you are setting a, a general scheme, a, a general set of allocations for the borough. It's like a roadmap, if you were, illustrating where the development would be acceptable and so on and so forth. And it's for planning applications to come in to finesse the detail of those. And if the application that's come in has suggested that they believe they can fit more units onto the site, then that's something that that application can validly try and do. So I don't think a strict adherence to, to the, the 106 is necessarily something that, that we can sort of pin our mask to, if you like. <laughs> Thank you. I'm just going to invite our head of planning again, please. Just that, again, perhaps offering members some more clarity on numbers. I think it's important to, to realise that if the Northern Relief Road, which is an extant local plan policy, and I have to keep reminding you of that now, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry if I sounded like a broken record on that one. If that comes forward, the maximum number of dwellings on this site will be 212. It is only without the Northern Relief Road that the numbers of houses would go up to 380. It comes up on place. Sure. I'm just saying on that point, that's that's one of the things that I'm I'm saying. We we're saying that the Northern Relief Road doesn't come forward. It's 380 houses. We've only one way in and one way out. Yeah. That's that is a, a major problem. Yeah. But understanding that it, it is a complex case, um, it's the reason why we've got a whole meeting on its own just for these these issues tonight. It's not going to be an easy one. Um, and I'm happy to withdraw my proposal and propose that we defer for officers to discuss that. Um, I'm, I'm happy to be involved in those discussions as well, just to, to bring up my points. Um, knowing as well that it would be an inquiry, I think it's all understandable with the complexity of it. I've, I've been to inquiries before and I'm happy to, to go forward if it is refused and used um, 
as, as a proposer, if, if, depending what happens at the next meeting. Um, but I, I would be going on to the inquiry and, and standing with the officers to try and fight it. Thank you. So I'm happy to put that proposal that is sent to us. Thank you. Do I have a second, Councillor Boring? Um, I concur with my fellow councillor in, in that case, but, but for a point of clarification, the fact that this is going to speed things up, if we defer this item as requested, does that mean that next item 2.3? Will also then fall will go automatically go for deferment. So we won't be discussing that then. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. I'll try to be brief as I could. <laughs> yeah, well, of course we will need to introduce it and then move to the deferment. Yes, yeah. Okay. Thank you. So members, you've heard the uh, proposal on the floor, duly seconded. Uh, those in favour. Unanimous. So that was deferred for um, the City Council's opinion. Thank you, members. Right. Um, we will now do um, item two, three, as, as it's going to be fairly quick. Um, I will suggest, uh, and this one is two zero of league of five zero six zero six six of league and and it's landed to Lomas Road Backchild and I thank you also for um just a very brief hour, I think. It will be great. Apologies, I Closed down teams, so I can't show you the, the, the screen, but uh, we will be recommending this item is not uh, considered tonight because the original scheme was acting on Low Mass Road that was objected to by ourselves and um, and Ken County Council, but there's no footways on there, it's highway safety issues. So we proposed it came in through phase four um, of um, Western Church Road, so that's at least seven to ten years away, um, unless the issue of um, and we've said in the report that uh, we really can't determine this until the access issue is sorted out. So we are recommending that uh, in the light of that, that this item is, is deferred to a future meeting as it, as it can't reasonably be um, determined until there is certainty about the means of access. Thank you. Thank you. Chancellor Boyne. On that ground, Mr Chairman, I propose that we defer this to a future meeting. <laughs> if, they, if that speaks things up, thank you. <laughs> Is indeed seconded by Councillor Martin. Those in favour? That's unanimous. So again, uh, this item is, is deferred. Thank you, members. And finally, we move on to item um, 2 1. <laughs> and this is uh, Land at Tong Road. Um, reference number uh, 2 oblique 503418 oblique out. I'll thank you also for um, an outline and any update, please. Yes, Chair. Um, this is a scheme um, within the built up area boundary for um, um, Sitting Bourne. It's a paddock's site, technically Brownfield. Um, has no problem in terms of principal development in accordance with policy ST1 and ST4 of um, the local plan. Um, it's a terrace scheme. We think it's a reasonable design. Uh, there's open space. It meets policy on open space. Uh, because of um, the open space um, and considerable tree buffer on the uh, southern side of the Great East Hall Estate, um, there are a few objections there on overlooking. We don't feel there's overlooking because the open space would be where the houses would be, and there wouldn't be houses in, in that area where there'd be most risk of, of overlooking. Um, um, the, the scheme would contribute part of the cost towards um, pedestrian crossing and part of the cost towards um, um, traffic calming. Um, slight modification to the recommendation here. Without certain, it, it, we really did provide a split of costs, but without certainty over the, um, the MU2 sites coming forward, this scheme would have to cover the whole of those costs, but those, those costs are not excessive. It'd be £40,000 for the pedestrian crossing, about £15,000 
for the traffic farming scheme. So we would suggest to modify the recommendation so they could put the full cost of that rather than I think 50 percent was uh, what, what was suggested in the recommendation. Uh, I think that would be reasonable given there might be some time before the other schemes in this uh, along this street are, are determined. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Langton. Um, can I invite um, James Delafield, please, to speak on this item? And uh, apologies, James, that you've had uh, quite a wait this evening. Thank you, Chair. That's not a problem. Um, good evening, members. My name is James Delafield, and I'm the agent for the planning application. The application before you this evening seeks outline planning permission for up to 16 dwellings, with all matters reserved apart from access. The officer's report sets out a rigorous and thorough assessment of the application on its planning merits. The conclusions reached and recommendation to approve are soundly based on the technical evidence that supports the planning application and consultee responses. The local plan seeks to steer new housing development to define built up areas of the district, with Sittingbourne being the primary focus. The site is located within the settlement boundary of Sittingbourne and the application provides an opportunity to deliver an additional 16 new homes in this accessible location, making effective use of previously developed land in line with the aims of both local and national planning policy. Pro the proposals allow for the widening of Tong Road and a new footway to be incorporated along the site frontage. The illustrative layout shows that the off-street parking provision accords to current standards. Provision can be made for the necessary electric vehicle charging, the detailed arrangements being considered at a reserve matter stage. It's been demonstrated that the proposal would not lead to any significant increase in traffic or other significant impacts on the local highway network, either alone, either alone or in combination with other development. It has also been demonstrated that a suitable access arrangement can be achieved. Kent County Council, as the local highways authority, has been consulted and raises no objections to the proposals. Significantly, the application is to be determined in accordance with the presumption in favour of sustainable development in the context of a five-year housing land supply shortfall. The housing land supply situation in Swale increases the importance of permitting residential development on small-scale windfill sites such as this, in line with paragraph 69 of the MPPF. There are strong material considerations supporting the grant of permission, and I would ask that the Planning Committee take them fully into account when making your decision. Thank you for your time, and we hope that you'll be in a position to approve the application in line with your officer's recommendation. Thank you, James, and again, thank you for being patient with us. Thank you. Um, I move the officer recommendation, seconded by Councillor Martin. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Hall. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm a bit bewildered at this application uh, being a local councillor. I can't believe it's been recommended for approval. In all my years as a planning member, I consider this application to be the most undesirable to come in front of me. The location, in my opinion, is not suitable for housing. This narrow country road a speed limit of 70 miles per hour is known to local residents as a racetrack. Just a few metres from the proposed entrance, there's a road crossing uh, used by at least 100 children each day going to school. The extra proposed traffic coming out and in and out of that place would create a checking safety hazard. Now, they also just said about a zebra crossing. I've been trying to get one for six years. Kent County Council have turned it down every time. Um, so I don't see that getting anywhere, and uh, I just believe the best option in this is for members to go and visit and have a sign me. Um, can I just say to the chair, um, I've, I've read your many articles over the years in the local press regarding the um, pedestrian crossing, and that is what has inspired us to ask Kent County Council to bring it forward, and they've now agreed. Oh, the only issue for them was funding. Why did they agree to you? And I'll be honest with you, that is a very dangerous road. There's a 70 mile and there's a speed limit there. How are you going to curtail that? Um, that would be a sign restricting it to well, I'm also asking to move that. For many yeah. years, they won't move it. So, children are crossing that road by the entrances. The cars can buy it 70 mile an hour. We made the argument and we said if it was combined with uh, an entrance sign, reducing it to 20 miles an hour on Tom Road, Lomas Road. And uh, an entry uh, scheme, which we've consulted, we've actually half designed with the Western Church Road traffic engineers, that would slow traffic sufficiently down at the pedestrian crossing so they'd be at the speed limit 
carrying on to believing that Andrew up and through all that for many years. I've got nowhere with it. He must have a magic wand there. <laughs> um, I think, have you ever been there yourself personally? You have? Oh, okay. But I'm still asking if we can have a safe place. Well, I'll second that. Okay, we have a proposal to the floor. For a site visit? I'll second. You know, that'll be the third then, Council Winkers. It's only been. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Members, those in favour of a. Oh, does anybody want to talk to you first at the site meeting? Oh, no, those in favour? against. Tensions. So eight, four, four against and one abstention. So um, we will arrange a site meeting for that particular item to be brought back to a future meeting. Councillor Martin, apologies. I was about to say, can I put my apologies in for that site meeting straight off the bat? We know it's going to be when I work. Mm. <laughs> Members, just before we um, we close this meeting, um, it's uh, Andrew Layton who's going to be with us a short time. Um, it's his last meeting uh, this evening, and. Um, I understand it's going off to do a little bit of sand dancing or something in, in Dubai. Is that right, Andrew? Yeah. Um, thank you very much indeed for your, your wise counsel and um, so I thank you very much indeed and uh, wish you well in the future. Thank you. Sorry, sorry. 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 <laughs>